is located. I, and the idea that I have to be in the drawer level to, um, to work in there. So I went up and I double clicked that breadcrumb drawer. I could have double clicked this as well. And that puts me at the level, in, in the level of drawer so I can build this drawer out. And once I do that, I get back to insert size locate. So I take a board and this is the first time that we're seeing boards this evening. And this is the new board form. So this will be, and here it's going into the drawer. And here's where I picked the materials. And I'm going to stick with this ash light material. If I wanted another material, and it, the four that show up here are the ones that are, are most frequently used. So if I added uh, slate to the project, one of these four would become slate because the, the idea is that you kind of use the same material over and over again. Um, and, and so we'll, we'll, I'll just use that. So the board needs a name. It has to come from a material. And the next piece of information is the width. Well, the way I like the way this rolls out because I can just go down here and say, well, the drawer box is 24. So the, my, my box front is gonna be 24. The height is 12. Okay, and here the, the thickness of the material is, is three quarters. So I put three quarters for the depth and set that as being the thickness. And now you see this icon. Uh, the other part of this information is what is the grain direction? Now, a couple of things. We use this information for the cut list. Uh, sketch list uses the thickness and the grain direction to figure out the length and things like that. And it's especially important for the optimizer because the optimizer actually takes a virtual sheet of plywood, taking into account the grain direction, and it lays out each board onto that sheet of, pl of plywood if it fits at, according to the thickness and the, and the grain direction. So that's why we collect this information about a new board. And after a while, you know, if you don't have to think about it, it goes very quickly. And what you'll see as we go on is once I create one board, oftentimes I just take that board and clone or make a copy of it that way. In this case, there's no, all I did was insert and size. I didn't, there's no locating because that's where I want it. If I continue to build the drawer um, and do that and I just, it's, it's insert size and locate, just rinse and repeat. So this is the side. Same material. Now, in this case, the width is three quarters, if you think about it, because it's going to look like that as a drawer side. The height I'm going to put at eight, and the depth uh, will be what's the depth of the drawers? 12? I think it's 12. I'm going to put the depth at 12, put the grain direction that way, and let's see where it's going. All right. So that's inserted. It's not, it's not completely sized, it's inserted. It kind of combined size and locate. And what I know is that this board, the front board's three quarters. So I'm gonna take this dot here and say, this board has to be three quarters. And at the same time, I'm gonna make the left of this to be say one and a half or one and a quarter or whatever. And what that'll do is that puts the sideboard be behind the front of the box such that it butts. And I've moved it to the left for whatever uh, drawer slide uh, you, you might need like that. Now, if I continue to go, to go on and say, well, I'm gonna take this front board and this is I call it a utility. I want to do is I'm going to clone that board. And on the calculator, I can take um, this slider and just slide it to the back and slide it all the way to the back like that. And while I'm here, say the height of that is eight. 
click on the button top, so the calculator does its work. Come here, notice the left of that is one and a half. So I can make the left of this one and a half like that, changing the width there. And now uh, a tool in Sketchlist is, you know, you can right click the red dot and enter the value. But in this case, it's easier. I'm going to take that red dot, hold down the shift key on my keyboard and just drag it back there and snap it. I'm gonna take and I'm going to clone and mirror that. So that sideboard on the left becomes this side. The right edge of that board is 22 and a half. And say this right is 22 and a half, changing the width. And now, now I have my box. If I wanted to put the bottom board in, the only thing that's different is, and I might as well just do it before I spend more time talking about it than anything. So I can make up uh, that. This is three quarters, because uh, that's the thickness I'm using. That's the, the thickness. And this is 12. Okay, I'm going to add the board. So here, all I've really done is, is, is insert the board. And I haven't really sized it. I haven't located it. I choose when I'm in this situation to use the blue dots because it's just the easiest way in my opinion. And I copy that value, come here and take that value and paste it. I, I know that if I lifted this up, the drawer is gonna fall out because I didn't put you know, the joinery in here, but we, we can get to that in a bit. So I take that red dot, just take it and drag it, snap it there. Take this red dot and drag it out there and snap it. So now I have, a for purposes of uh, sort of instruction, I've got a perfectly good drawer. Take that board, go to the board detail level. And now I'm gonna take the two ends like this and like this, say tenant. So I've got a, a tenant on both sides and I just say save. Now you'll see the tenons is on both sides. And all the joinery works essentially the same way. What the tenon does, I th think it's the only joint that does it, is uh, it's going to change the cut length of this sideboard by a half inch, a quarter inch here and a quarter inch there. So you don't have to account for that when you're doing the cut list. Now the debate goes on, some people, um, they don't use joinery. What they would do is take the side board and just design it to be a half inch bigger. Fine. Uh, the benefit is it saves time. I think from, from my point of view, because then what happens is it, uh, it just doesn't look right in my, in my eye, you know, but what I do is I go back and I deleted that other board and I say, all right, now that I've got this detailed out with the tenons, I want to clone and mirror that and everything is fine. Come back to, to the assembly level and there's my drawer. I think it was at the last week's uh, pop-up meeting, somebody had a really great question. He said, well, how do I put a drawer inside of a drawer? And you can take this and you could make a copy of it and change the size and put it inside the drawer. But what happens is that when I move this drawer, it, it, if I put a drawer inside of a drawer and just make it smaller, when I take this drawer and move it from left to right, the other drawer is going to stay there because they're not they're not linked together logically anyway. Okay. So what I what I suggest to the person who had asked at the meeting about how do I put a drawer in a drawer is what I would do is go to the drawer level and there's another level in the hierarchy or in the nesting of hardware. So I just put in a hard piece of hardware there. Okay, now it says hardware, but I'm gonna rename it uh, inside drawer. Okay, uh, that's the insert step size and locate. So it's going to be six inches high, 12 inches wide like that. And the depth is going to be, say it'll be eight inches deep. I don't know, whatever. 
So that's sizing that inner drawer. And now I'm going to, so that's insert size, I'm gonna locate. Now how do I locate it? I'm gonna locate it with, with my spreadsheet. So I come here and say, the bottom of that drawer has a top value is three quarters. So the bottom of this drawer would be three quarters. I'm gonna keep the height at six and change the top. If I look here, the uh, left side is one and a half. I'm sorry, no, I want the right side because I wanna put it inside there. So the right side of that sideboard is two and a quarter. Let's make this two and a quarter, switching it over to the right like that. And the front, if I take the box front, it's back. I didn't rename this. You should always rename, should always rename boards. It just, you get, you get a lot of objects in your design. It just gets, it just gets uh, much easier to, to name them properly. So go back to this drawer and say the back of that, which is now eight, I want to have that be the, the front of that board, which is back is 17 and a quarter. So if I make that 17, say I make it 17, I get a little slot back there. Going to keep the depth the same. It's a calculator, so I click that front value, and there's my inside, there's my inside drawer. And while I was doing this, all right, so then, so it's going to be two and three quarters and change the height. So now I have a drawer within a drawer. The benefit of that, and I'm not gonna bother building out this sub drawer because we've done that already. If I come back here and say, all right, now I'm gonna take that thing and scoot it to the left, the inner drawer moves with it. And if I wanna take that and clone it, another function in Sketch is clone in space, and I'm going to have, um, one clone, space amount will be uh, three quarters of an inch, like that, clone. Now I've got two drawers. And if we look in there, you see that there's a drawer, a sub drawer, an inner drawer inside of that drawer, okay? So that covers, I think, uh, the nesting idea. Uh, hopefully you get an idea of the kind of the relativity of look there and say the left of that is 59 and a quarter. So the right of this is going to be 59 and a quarter, moving it that way and like that. 